a certain extent, we all share resources, but sometimes it's surprising who is using what and by how much. One natural resource with unlikely competitors is milkweed. Milkweed contains a chemical defense that deters most predation. However, the monarch butterfly is a specialist and they're able to survive on only milkweed unharmed as caterpillars. In recent times, monarchs and milkweed have become an iconic duo for conservation on account of their declining numbers and their strong relationship. A monarch conservation rule of thumb is to establish more milkweed to replace those lost due to row crop agricultural practices. Range lands have been proposed as a surrogate location because they cover an enormous amount of land, but most range lands are livestock grazed. Now there are two schools of thought when it comes to cattle and milkweed, both relatively old in theory. One is that because of those chemicals I mentioned, milkweed is so toxic to cattle that the ingestion of even one stem can result in death. The second is that milkweed is an ice cream plant that cattle preferentially graze for a snack. Now these are polar opposites, so which is it? If you had all of your favorite food you could ever ask for, you'd only be able to eat a certain amount before you felt full, right? Well, we expect something similar of cattle, that the level of herbivory would peak at a given point, despite if more milkweed is available. We found that in general, cattle didn't eat more than 11% of milkweed in any given area, but we did see an increase in herbivory later in the grazing season, likely due to changing dietary needs. Another piece of this puzzle is land management. Since cattle and monarchs are both using milkweed on these landscapes, whatever management produces the most milkweed would be ideal. In our neck of the woods, most landowners adhere to traditional management, such as season lawn grazing, but this can lead to landscape level uniformity, which isn't as helpful for conservation. In contrast, some suggest using a patch burn grazing system, which through organized fire in different sections every year creates landscape level diversity or heterogeneity, which is good. A heterogeneity based rotational grazing system is designed for that same outcome, but in the absence of fire. And it's in this last one that we saw the highest milkweed abundance. So what does all of this mean? Well, for one, it seems both schools of thought are outdated. Cattle eat milkweed, but not enough to get sick and certainly not enough to warrant obsession. And even though cattle eat more milkweed later in the summer, which overlaps with peak monarch reproduction here in North Dakota, the amount they're eating is relatively low, likely leaving plenty for monarch use. And if a landowner uses certain management strategies that result in more milkweed, like say a heterogeneity-based rotational grazing, for example, all the better. Sharing resources is necessary in today's world. And now we have enough information to start a new school of thought, that milkweed is one hot commodity, able to support both cattle and monarchs. Thank you.